Hello everybody, welcome back to American Textbook Reading. We're on Social Studies Book 3 in the final lesson of the book, Lesson 15. Wow, time really goes by fast. In Lesson 15, we're talking about how we, we as humans, we change our environment. So we will discover in this lesson how humans change the environment and also who Rachel Carson was. Interesting. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the first word in the vocabulary is plow. P and L together. P, L. Plow. So, P and then L sound. Your tongue is on the roof of your mouth behind your front teeth. L. Plow. Plow. To plow is, it's a verb, so it means to turn over a field. It doesn't mean, of course, to take the whole field and turn it over. It means to take the dirt or the soil in the field and with an instrument like a hoe and uh, bring the dirt that's on the bottom to the top. And that's called turning over a field or land with a farming tool. Now, I mentioned a hoe, but of course, there are many different ways to do it. You can do it by hand, which is very difficult, takes a long time. Uh, of course, people used horses, donkeys, uh, cows, oxes, but nowadays, of course, people use machinery, and that's the picture that we see. And as you can see, you have one, two, three, four, four pieces of metal digging into the earth, so that does the work of four people or four horses at one time. So, of course, machinery has made our lives a lot, a lot easier and has made work much more efficient. So, to plow a field is to turn over the land. Why do farmers do that? Because what they're trying to do is they're trying to uh, get the soil that's underneath the ground up on the surface and also to help uh, get air into the, uh, the soil and to break it up so that the land will absorb water more easily. And of course, these are good conditions for growing plants. Basically, they're preparing the land to make it uh, more uh, suitable for growing plants so that the plants will grow faster and better and healthier. Okay. Next, we have harvest. So you plow the field in the spring, right? In the springtime, the farmers are out plowing the land and then they plant the seeds, of course. Over the summertime, those plants will grow. In the fall, it's time to harvest. Now, harvest can be a noun or a verb. In this case, it's a verb. To harvest means to collect the crops. So after the plants have grown and they have produced fruit or vegetables or whatever it is the farmers are growing, in the fall, it's time to go out and gather all those crops to send it to the supermarket. Um, so to collect crops or plants from the fields. And hopefully farmers look forward to a good harvest. And Thanksgiving in the fall is a celebration of hopefully a good harvest. Okay, it's a way to celebrate. Oh, good, we, 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 you know, we, the planting season is over. We've harvested all the food. Let's have a big feast to celebrate. Not many Thanksgivings are like that, but they celebrate the harvest. In that case, the harvest is a noun. So harvest can be noun or it can be verb. Okay. Builder. A builder is a person that builds. Very easy, right? We have ER. Many words have ER. It means a person who does the uh, action indicated in the root of the word. In this case, to build, build, builder, right? At a, at a restaurant, you know, if you wait, if your job is to wait for the customer, you are a waiter or waitress, right? So ER, it, we add it to, to designate that that's a person who does that thing. Not always, but it's a very common pattern in English. So, a builder is a person that makes buildings, right? In this case, this gentleman here, he is making a brick wall. He is putting, he is, uh, putting bricks together to make a brick wall to make a building. Okay, so that's a builder. Dig. And of course, you can say digger, right? This person is a digger, right? But here we just have the verb, right? Dig, to dig. To dig means to make a hole in soil, soil, dirt, the ground, with a tool or hands. Oh, don't do that. You'll get all dirt all over your hands and under your fingernails. But you'll notice that dogs like to dig holes, not with their hands, of course, with their paws, but it's like their hands, but we call them paws, P-A-W-S. 
P-A-W-S. But they're still digging, right? Dogs don't use a tool. They're not out there with a shovel, right? They're using their, their paws to dig a hole. So anytime that uh, a person or an animal uh, creates a hole in the ground, that verb is called to dig. And some animals are very good at digging, right? They make their homes underground. Okay, so that's to dig. Tunnel. Now, a tunnel, if you dig deep enough and you go down and then you go, you go not down, but you go across, right? Or maybe you dig through a mountain, especially in this case, right? Uh, there's a town here and a town here and there's a mountain in between. Well, people will dig a tunnel through the mountain. Of course, a tunnel is just an underground path that is made through a mountain or a hill. Uh, also, it could also be under some other geological feature like uh, uh, water. For example, there's a very famous tunnel between Britain and France, and that goes under the channel, uh, the British Channel or the English Channel. And basically, that's a tunnel that they dug. They had to go down, right, to go under the water, and it comes, you know, goes down in Britain and it comes back up in France, or goes down in France and comes up in England. Um, so that is a, another famous tunnel, right? So it's any underground path that is made through a mountain, a hill, or even underwater, or even under the city. Many of your, if you live in a large city, you might have a subway system, and the subway tunnels are under the city. So any underground path, okay? Whether it's for, you know, an animal, right? Animals dig tunnels, a person, a walking tunnel, a cars, or even trains, subways, whatever. They're all, we all call those tunnels. Okay. Dam. Dam is another uh, very huge project, uh, engineering project that people will build, builders will build. And a dam is a kind of wall. And as you can see, it's a wall that uh, holds water back. So it's a wall that, uh, that, that prevents water from flowing naturally. Now, of course, water is allowed to flow through the dam. And in fact, that's a very good way uh, to collect that energy. And that would be a hydroelectric dam. Hydro. Hydro, by the way, means water. And electric, of course, you know, electric, electricity, elect, oops, electric, yeah, I gotta pay more attention to spelling and a little less attention to talking. <laughs> Hydroelectric. So hydro means electricity from water, right? Hydro means water, right? So this is a good way. Many dams are hydroelectric dams. They take that energy from the flowing water and they convert that uh, energy into electricity, which is another form of, of energy. So a dam is a kind of wall that is built across a river. Of course, you know, you build it across a river to prevent water from flowing. Of course, it doesn't prevent, it, you're not saying, okay, you don't want any water to flow. You do want water to flow. But what dams do usually is to regulate that water. So for example, you might live in an area where there's a lot of rain and every year it might flood downstream. But if you build a dam there, then you can control the amount of water and make sure the amount of water that's flowing out of the dam is the same all year round, no matter what the weather conditions are. So that's one reason why people build dams. Another reason why people build dams is because they want to have a supply of fresh water for a nearby city, for example. Um, uh, Hoover Dam, this isn't Hoover Dam. No, that's not Hoover Dam. But there's a famous Hoover Dam near Las Vegas in Nevada. And of course, uh, Las Vegas uses a lot of the water uh, that is dammed up there for the city, for the people who live in the city. So that's another reason to build a dam. So there's a lot of different reasons for dam building. Okay. Negative. Negative is something that is harmful, unpleasant, or bad. What is the opposite of negative? Of course, the opposite of negative is positive. So if you're talking about something and you're describing it, you can talk about the negative side of something. Those are the harmful or bad, unpleasant things or aspects about a, a person, a place, a thing, an object. Or, on the other hand, you can talk about the positive things, and those are the, the, the good things, the, the pleasant things, the nice things that people like about something. 
So negative, positive. They are opposite. Okay. Pesticide. A pesticide. Now, this is an interesting word, okay? Pesticide. Pest, if I don't know if you know this, what is a pest? A pest is something that bothers you. And of course, insects bother people. Are right? you trying to sleep? There's a mosquito buzzing around your head, right? That's a pest, right? Or if you're walking through the, uh, the forest and you get insects on your legs that are on your feet or on your ankles that might bite you, right? Those, you don't like those. That's bothering you. That's a pest. Now, what does side mean? Side means to kill, right? Uh, so side, for example, homicide is uh, the act of killing another person, a human being. Uh, suicide is killing oneself. Genocide is killing a whole race of people or a whole group of people. So side means death or killing. So basically this means killing insects, right? Pesticide is a noun and it's a chemical, uh, but it's actually a chemical, it's a poison because it's a type of chemical that can kill living organisms. So pesticide is a poison that is used to kill, right, side, uh, to kill insects, pests, that damage crops. So farmers will use pesticides to kill the insects, and that is, of course, to prevent the insects from eating all of their crops, right? So, of course, when the farmer goes through all this work to grow crops, whether it's corn, uh, broccoli, uh, apples, whatever they're growing, this is a great food source for insects to move in and eat all the food, right? Of course, farmers don't want that, so they spray their crops with pesticide, and that will kill the insects and prevent them from eating all of their fruit. However, there are some negative sides to pesticides too. So we have positive, you know, we just talked about negative and positive. So there are positive aspects to pesticides. There are also, of course, negative aspects to pesticides as well. So it's very important to balance these two. Okay, so anyway, that's pesticide. And that is our words. Those are our words for today's lesson. Let's talk about the two main ideas of this lesson. And the first main idea is changing the environment, right? We said, how do humans, how do we change the environment? There are many different ways. First, one way is that builders dig beneath the earth to make tunnels. So that's one way to change the environment. A very famous tunnel is the tunnel that connects England, Britain, to France. It's called the Chunnel because it goes under the channel. So it's a channel, tunnel, chunnel. Okay, so uh, it's, a, it's a very famous tunnel that connects the two countries. It used to be, you know, these England, Britain is an island. You can't ride a horse or drive a car from England to France. You have to use a boat or a ship. But now you don't. You can drive. You can. You, uh, there's a train also that runs through the channel. So diggers dig beneath the earth to make tunnels. What's another way? Builders. Again, we're using builders in both of these because they're building. They're not just building buildings. They're building a massive construction projects. A tunnel is not really a building, but it is a massive construction project. A dam is yeah, kind of like a building, but people don't live in it or work in it, but it's still a type of construction. It's, it's a huge construction project. And it, actually, this does look a little bit like the Hoover Dam. I'm not sure, but it, it kind of looks like that. It's the same kind of area with the desert rock. Okay, but anyway, builders create dams to make electricity, as I explained with the hydroelectric dams. And finally, we have farmers. Farmers use pesticide to have more crops. They kill the insects. The insects can't eat the, the crops, so that means we have more crops for ourselves, and the farmers don't have to work as much to get the same amount of food. So, we talked about negative, and the opposite of negative is positive, right? So positive. Positive are things that are good, that we like, that we want to have. Those are positive things. And when we think about these three ways that we change the environment, there are positive effects and there are negative effects with everything, really. Positive. Positive what is the positive things about these three types of changing our environment? Well, they can make our lives better, right? We don't have to get on a boat to, to go from Britain to France. We can just drive. It's very easy. We don't have to have the added expense of building a boat or running a, 
trans uh, a transportation company over water. So it's a much easier. We don't have to go over the mountain. We can just go under the mountain or through the mountain. We can make electricity cheaply and without polluting the environment with a hydroelectric dam. With a pesticide, we have more food. So these are all positive effects. However, there are also negative effects, right? The negative effects are that they can hurt the environment, right? When you dig up a lot of earth and you uh, uh, build a lot of, or you, you use a lot of steel and metal, of course, you have to impact the environment in a negative way. When you create a dam, all the land that was before the dam that was nice land is now underwater. It's gone. And downstream, uh, you know, it may affect uh, the downstream down the river as well. And animals that live in that river, well, now all of a sudden they can't move from the upper part to the lower part of the river. So those are negative effects. Pesticides, like I said, they don't just kill insects, they kill birds and they're harmful to other animals as well. So those are negative effects of pesticides. So everything has a positive side and a negative side. Now, the second idea is we're talking about Rachel Carson. You may not have heard of her. She was a very, but she's a very famous environmentalist. And why is she famous? Because she wrote a book called Silent Spring. She was a scientist. She was also a writer. She wrote a famous book called Silent Spring. And what she did was she took a look at the use of pesticides that farmers were using in their fields and she studied this and she realized that these pesticides are killing other animals, especially birds. The reason her book is called Silent Spring is because the idea is that these pesticides were killing off many types of birds. And if it, we continued to use the pesticides, the birds would all die out and we wouldn't hear their song in the spring. Think about it, in the springtime, you hear a lot of birds chirping and singing different songs uh, or making different noises. But if we kept using pesticides, all the birds die, spring would be silent. Because of the book, new laws were made to protect nature. Her book had a very important effect on, uh, at least in America, that the American government passed strict laws about the use of pesticides. And one pesticide, I think it was called DDT, uh, which was very strong and very powerful, it was banned. So farmers cannot use it anymore. And farmers, of course, have to regulate. Their use of pesticide is now regulated by a government agency. And so then that's a good thing. Of course, pesticides are helpful. They help feed a lot of people. It protects a lot of people from dying of starvation, but overuse can be harmful. So with everything, you know, we have a positive effect and a negative effect. We should balance those, right? Make sure that we have some kind of regulations or laws in place to make sure that the negative effects don't outweigh the positive effects. Okay, interesting. Okay, now it's time to take a look at the reading. So, as usual, read along in your mind with me or read along out loud. Practice the pronunciation and focus on the key vocabulary that we're learning in this lesson. Are you guys ready? Let's begin. People change their environment to make their lives better. There are many ways in which people change their environment. Farmers, for example, plow the land before planting seeds. They use machines to harvest crops, which can affect the environment in many ways. Builders dig beneath the earth to make tunnels through mountains and underground. They also create large dams to make electricity. Such dams change the water flow of a river or stream. To make it easier to cross rivers, people build bridges, which can change the environment of a river in many different ways. Changing our environment makes our lives better, but we should be careful. Changing the environment can have negative effects on nature. 
we can have more crops by using pesticides. But using too much pesticide can kill animals, plants, and even humans. Okay, let's talk about how this reading passage was organized. How is the information organized in the reading passage? And here we have a very common way to organize information in a written piece, and that is you have a main idea and then details. The main idea is like the topic sentence. It's the sentence that you say at the beginning, and then you support it with details or examples. In this case, we have the main idea is people beep their environment to make their lives better. Of course, this whole lesson is about how people change their environment change their environment to make their lives better. And by the way, change is a neutral word. So this sentence is neutral. It's not positive, it's not negative. If we wanted a positive statement, we would say people improve their environment to make their lives better. And that would be argumentative, right? Change, when you say people change their environment to make their lives better, that's just description, right? You could also do negative, by the way. People destroy their environment in an attempt to make their lives better. So you could have a positive or negative statement, but that's more of an argumentative passage. This one's just a neutral. People change their environment, so it's more descriptive. Interesting. Okay, so people change their environment. That's the main idea. What are the details? And we have three main details to support that idea. First of all, we have farmers beep the earth before planting seeds. Remember, we talked about this word, farmers plow the earth. And of course, plow can be a verb or a noun. They use a plow to plow the earth, right? They use beep to harvest crops. Well, actually, it's the same thing that they use to plow the earth as they use to harvest the crops. And in the passage, we saw that it was machines. Machines. So they use, they, of course, farmers, they use machines to harvest crops. They also use machines to plow the field. In the next detail, we go to a different group. We talk about builders. Builders dig the earth to make tunnels. They also create beep to make electricity. Now we talked about this quite a bit. Of course, we know the word is dams and we have to have it plural, dams, S, because they don't just build one dam, right? It's builders and we're talking about all over the world. So there's many dams. They also create dams to make electricity, hydroelectric dams. Finally, our last detail for this chart is to make it easier to cross rivers, people build Beep. So what do they build? Of course, you could say tunnels here. You could say that, and that's possible. I'm thinking about a famous tunnel in New York that goes under, I think it's the Hudson River. I'm not sure. Or is it? Yeah, I'm not sure. But it's the Lincoln Tunnel, and it connects Jersey to Manhattan, and it goes under the river. But in the passage, they talked about bridges. Bridges are easier and more common, right? It's a lot easier to build a bridge than it is to dig a tunnel. So to make it easier to cross rivers, people build bridges. And all of these things change the environment in an attempt to make people's lives better. So all these details support the main topic sentence or the main idea. Okay, well that about wraps it up for this lesson. As we can see, uh, we're all talking about different ways that human beings change their environment to hopefully improve their lives. And as we can see in this unit, there are positive effects and negative effects of that. That's an important thing to remember. We all want to change our environment. We want to make our lives better, but we have to be careful that the positive change that we're looking for doesn't cause negative side effects that may destroy the positive effects, right? That the negative effects are not greater than the positive outcomes that we desire. Okay. Well, and actually this wraps up the entire book, right? This is the last lesson of the book. So I hope you've learned a lot with me studying these different lessons and a lot of new vocabulary and a lot of ideas about the, the people and the world around us. I think one of the main ideas from the book that we can take from many of these lessons is that we all work together to try to improve our lives. We all want to live happier, more productive lives. And it's important to uh, not only take care of ourselves, but also to take care of the people around around us. Respect each other, uh, work hard to improve your life, but also be careful about the positive and negative effects of what you're doing. That kind of wraps up this lesson, kind of wraps up the book as well. So thank you very much for studying with me. 
I hope to see you in the next book. Okay, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.